Welcome to today's 3D print. We have another printer. I love printers. Nobody can't have too many printers. Let's just say, eh, don't ignore anybody who says you can have too many printers. Tron XY X3S from Gearbest. Thank you, Gearbest, for the printer. This printer is a clone of the CR10. So Tron XY's variation of the CR10. We are going to unbox it, show you what's inside, build it. I'll let you know about any gotchas and catches, and then we are going to make a print on one shot. So stay tuned. Alrighty, everything is well packed. I had no issues with the packing. It's all the standard cut foam, everything slips into place. Your brain box, your base plate, see that? And yeah, we'll get to that in a minute. Your entire head assembly, I do like that head. That is a decent head. Uh, 3D printed though, and that is loose as crap. These steppers are loose as crap. Oh yeah, we might even attach anymore. Aluminum PCB, steel Y carriage, garbage. We'll get to that in a minute. Probably usable, but you know it'll it'll be annoying. Uh, looks like they instead of using a piece of glass, they have a piece of fiberglass. That's interesting. It is flat, so I'll give them that. I don't see any bows or bends in it. Nothing obvious. And then a build tech ripoff. You know that standard Chinese build surface type material. Although I hear you can print directly on the fiberglass. So I might just try glue stick and fiberglass and see what happens. I'm going to put that aside. I'll be right back. Alrighty, inside the goodie box. USB cord, full size. Micro SD plus reader, 8 gigabytes. No name, but it is marked. Eh, Allen keys. Screws. We'll get back to those in a second. Power cord US. Phillips screwdriver. Little tiny straight screwdriver. A pitiful sample of filament. Lame. Some cute pastel bed clips and this is interesting it's an all-in-one it's like all one piece of metal this doesn't come apart so it's like welded stamped pressure fit together so I'm guessing that'll go on top of the box I should be able to mount that on top of the rail like I prefer to do we'll see and then let's get back to these really trying to fly Phillips screws you couldn't splurge for some cap screws so, if the cutouts will accept it, I'm going to use the cap screws because I don't feel like screwing around with Phillips screws to hold a printer together. That screams strip me. And it looks like they used Phillips screws everywhere. These are Phillips, 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 Phillips. Wow. <laughs> hey, it is Tron XY. It is a cheaper printer. We'll see what happens. The problem is, it's not a cheaper price. This printer is about 350 while the CR10 is 379 Hmm. I mean, it's got dual Z, but it doesn't have filament cut out and stuff like that. We'll see. I'll give it a fair shot. I didn't expect it to be as nice as the Creality. We kind of got spoiled by that, but we'll see. Okay, next up, we have to mount this gantry, your X and Z axes, to the printer. Just like the CR10, it, two bolts go through the frame into this, and you have these T brackets with hammer nuts on them that slide into these rails to stiffen it up. And I am going to proceed ahead and do that now. <laughs> Ran into my first little trouble. The T rail was pre installed, pretty thin metal, I might add, and it was not lined up correctly. I couldn't get the bolt to go in because it was holding the gantry in the wrong position. So I had to loosen them up so I can get the gantry in the right position. Got that side installed, it turned out the bracket was in the wrong spot, so I loosened it, moved it out of the way, put the two bolts in. By the way, I was able to replace the Phillips on the bottom with two 8mm by 20mm cap screws. The rest of them I can live with because they're exposed, but those two I wanted to be a higher quality screw, so I replaced the ones that came with the kit. Got the other half of the gantry installed, and then I ran into my first little issue. Um, these did not want to sit on top of the plate and you do not want these things floating in air. You want them sitting firmly on this extrusion. And the problem is they wouldn't reach. So what I had to do is um, I had to loosen up these two grub screws, lift the coupler up a little higher on the stepper motor, loosen up these grub screws and push the Z-Rod down from up here since it's captured pretty tightly in there um, so that I could push the stepper down all the way and still engage both couplings. Um, so just loosen them up, adjust them until you're firmly engaged on both and you'll be fine. All right, the gantry is installed. It is solid as with CR10 and any other construction of this sort. It is firm. The motors are seated firmly. 
Now I am going to wire everything up and go from there. I'll be right back. Next step is wiring. They have a couple of unified plugs that takes care of your heating elements and your end stops, which are all part of these unified plugs. These steppers themselves are separate, you know, your typical six pin stepper plugs. Um, they do have Y tension. The cable going to the heat bed is zip tied to the Y carriage plate, so they took care of the tension relief for the heat bed. And um, that's it, we'll go from there. I'm gonna hook up all the wires and we'll see what happens. Alrighty, the printer is assembled. I have a rough assembly finished, leveling that a little bit. Um, for you guys who like that, we got the plastic pouring. There it is. <laughs> and now it's time to turn it on. Let's see how noisy it is. That sounds like a siren. Standard blower, thicker than the Creality one. That's interesting. The Creality one's thinner. It is pretty noisy though, and that thing's really getting up there in pitch. So if I hang on to this printer, this will definitely be a add some bands to it printer. Um, the box is low pitch; it's not so bad, but this is high pitch. That's so going to have to be replaced. And I am getting response from the thermistors. I have temperatures. So I am now going to attach the plate. See, let's do it. It's just right here. All it is is this fiberglass plate, which is interesting. And then you just attach it with these clips. So I am going to now proceed with initial testing and get the thing leveled, booted up, make sure everything's tight. Go through with your Allen keys and your screwdriver. Check every nut, bolt, and screw on the machine. Be careful not to strip them. Make sure everything is tight. If it is not tight, if it's not tight, you're going to have a bad day. So make sure it's all tight. It does technically go to 420. I personally would limit it to about 405, 410. If you're really careful, you can go to 420. Um, you cannot level the X gantry by raising to the top because this one can go higher than this one. This one will top out before this one does. So you can't level it that way. So you're going to have to eyeball level it and then keep your plate level. Printer is going and I've got this raised up so I can, one thing you should do is lift your gantry up to 400 millimeters after loosening the screws for your retention brackets up top here. Let the gantry come up to 400 millimeters, then tighten those screws. This way you're, you'll have the least amount of resistance in your Z-Rods. And now we are going to attach there. Build tech knockoff. Uh, it doesn't even go all the way out. <laughs> Close enough though. So I'm going to apply that now. Basically you peel it, you stick one end down, and you slowly apply it this way so you avoid air bubbles. Got another one for you plastic porn lovers. You're gonna like this. Oh yeah. Can I get it off in one piece? I don't know, that's pretty hard. Not the PCB. The PCB is fine. I am so far okay with everything I see on this printer. There are some things I don't like, but they work and they're fine. There's one thing I don't like. And that's this Y carriage plate. It is way too thin. Way, way too thin. Let me demonstrate how thin it is. It's so thin it acts like a spring. <laughs> now thankfully they compensated for that a little bit by having the S4 style twin beams spread apart with the wheels here. So that's going to help a little bit with stability because this is nice and firm here. But that is so... Oof, I don't like it at all. We'll see. Maybe it'll work fine. Bed leveling is done. It is fussy. Do not attempt to move the bed with your hands. Use the controls in 10 millimeter increment to move the bed around because it is way too floppy to try to manhandle it and move it. So use the controls to move the bed to the four corners twice and do your bed leveling. Uh, the small acrylic Tetris piece on the side here, you can use that to adjust your home. So if it's too high or too low, adjust that. You're gonna wanna adjust it down slightly so that these springs are a little tighter than you might normally have them because you're gonna want them tight, otherwise they're gonna loosen up on you. Now I am preheating, heating up the nozzle and print bed to attempt to first print. Well, it's done. There's the Marvin. 
it's not bad. Not great, but this is just CR10 code. I haven't calibrated or coded anything, but it definitely is not a bad Marvin. Maybe this printer can actually work. I was really worried about that bed, but I think maybe I was over worried about it. So now I'm going to print a Jawbot and then a Benchy and then a Vase and a Rocket and I'll do my suite of test prints and I will make sure I get back to you guys with it. But that is my initial unboxing presentation build and first print of the Tron XY X3S. They cut a lot of corners, but they do appear to have cut the corners intelligently. I mean, the printer works. Heat bed sucks. It took like 15, 12, 15 minutes to get to like 36, 38 degrees, and then it took another 15 to get to 50. And it barely got there. <laughs> Heating failed. Why did you do that? It does this every now and then too. I've had to do it twice already where it says heating failed. I'm not sure why. So I'll have to work on that. That's it. You guys have a good day.